pretty much completely demolished uh, starting yesterday and even today, though it really began to escalate with uh, riot police coming in. Uh, not only riot police, it's really kind of hard to ascertain who all was really involved in this as far as was it just the Dakota police or, or whomever, uh, but there were military vehicles, there were Humvees brought in, there were uh, about a dozen Humvees, uh, many officers uh, dressed in camouflage, SWAT team members. Uh, it was more like a military operation going in, going on in there. According to independent media that was on the ground there, RT is reporting that 40 people were arrested. Um, we wanted to share with you several little clips here that, that, were, that were brought out here uh, that kind of shows the information as it went down there. Um, just kind Six of give or you seven a little... Humvees. Yep, okay, so they're starting to park and line up and face camp facing... Inside information there as this is happening. This is when the uh, heavy uh, military or light military, actually, uh, moderate to light military equipment began to come in. Uh, again, the officers all dressed, uh, or many of them dressed in military fatigues uh, that were first coming in with the Humvees uh, coming into this camp here. So the Government definitely prepared. National Guard is also, from what we understand, has been on the scene as well. Um, and very troubling, very troubling indeed, the information that was coming out here. Um, they were using these, um, as they called them bulldozers, not bulldozers. They're actually little um, front-end front loaders there that they brought in like little bobcats there to push the snow out of the way. Uh, where the snow had kind of been piled up in between the, the law enforcement and the tents that they were staying in. The tent that you're seeing there now on your screen, uh, this was supposed to be where there were about 30 or so protesters that were that were going to resist moderately uh, as far as uh, not, not forcibly, but to resist moderately to where they would have to be taken off. They were not just going to go away, um, you know, without being taken away. Uh, so there were, from what reports are saying, there were about 40 arrests made already. That was earlier today. Not sure exactly how many after that. Um, this is when we saw all of the uh, officers that came in in black. They're estimated around 50 more law enforcement. This is not counting those that are in the fatigues. Uh, of course, they had the helicopter um, NSA helicopter that was flying overhead that actually was reported that's what was on the side of the helicopter. We actually saw it with the camera that flew in one time uh, and that was exactly so. Uh, another thing that was kind of troubling in this a whole event here uh, that was mentioned that we uh, heard one of the reporters saying on camera here is that President Donald Trump does uh, hold a significant interest in the Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, this is one of the reasons why this became a major contention for him. Not only that, it was the very union for the Dakota Access Pipeline that supported him in his campaign, and he had made promises that this would be resolved. Now, many of uh, our viewers as well have said to us that President Trump was going to deal with this more so um, with the uh, Sioux Tribe Nation, uh, with, with their rights uh, in concern there, and possibly look at rerouting the pipeline. We can see this is definitely not what happened whatsoever. There was no rerouting the pipeline. From the very time that President Trump came into office, he immediately signed executive orders making the pipeline a, a go-ahead. So it is definitely going underneath the water there. And I realize it's being buried so many feet up underneath the water, but from what we're hearing, uh, even right now, where the uh, police have come, where the uh, mil apparently military personnel were, were there as well, that part of this land here is actually Sioux Tribe land that they're on. So, uh, very contentious situation. And to me, it's a, it's a shame on the president that, that this has come to this point here, that the... the Native Americans have rights, and to sit there and forcibly violate their rights, that's just a, another stain on the flag to go along with the stain that's already there from, from many years ago, and, and it's just very sad to see that this is the way it's gone. So many things that President Trump has done is, are good things, uh, but this is definitely not one of those things that is, that is a good thing there. So I'm just very concerned about this, 
and also at the fact that the way this is being handled with these with this military equipment they brought in, uh, realizing as uh, supposedly law enforcement officers that are coming in like this, but nonetheless it just makes me uh, more concerned about martial law in the United States. They're willing to bring in the, the uh, military style equipment, even though they're calling it police, it is definitely similar to what martial law would end up looking like in the very near future. And I say that too because President Trump is already talking about breaking out the National Guard to deal with uh, the, the crime ridden area of Chicago. And uh, he just mentioned again today in one of his tweets there on Twitter that seven more people died in the last 24 hours in Chicago. And I realize he's right. There, there is an epidemic problem there. But if Chicago doesn't bring it under control, he's going to bring out the National Guard, military, however the case is going to be. And it's going to be very much like uh, here with the Sioux Nation, uh, which the Sioux Nation, this is a total shame. There is nobody killing nobody here. This is the people trying to protect what is rightfully theirs. And that is a shame on the American uh, flag for that, for this to be happening. Moving on into other news as well, let me share with you here. Let me first get back over here and make sure we stop this video here. Uh, President Trump is also vowing to have the most advanced arsenal in nuclear in an uh, power. Interview, this President this Trump here. says he wants to make sure the U.S. nuclear weapons arsenal is second to none. I'm Steve Holland in Washington. I sat down in the Oval Office with President Trump and we talked about the American nuclear arsenal. He said for the first time since he was elected, that he wants to ensure the United States has superior nuclear capacity, that the United States has fallen behind in this capacity. It would be wonderful. A dream would be that no country would have nukes. But if countries are going to have nukes, we're going to be at the top of the pack. He seemed very concerned about North Korea and what to do about its ballistic missile program. We have a, a very big problem and a very dangerous problem for the world with North Korea. We're very angry at what he's done. The president uh, stressed time and again that he just got there. He's only been in office a month. He can't solve everything all at once, but that he is starting to tackle some of these big picture items. No doubt he definitely is. And I can't say that I blame President Trump when it comes to uh, having a better nuclear arsenal if there is going to be nukes in the world. And I appreciate the fact that, as he said there, that uh, it would be better if the world did not have nuclear weapons, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, the only thing is, I guess, you know, is it, going to, is it going to change anything by making a bigger nuclear arsenal? No, we're going right back to the Cold War uh, scenario. So I guess, as Yeshua said in the Bible, in, Ex in, in Matthew 24 there, Wars and rumors of wars. Always a rumor when it comes to this Cold War, and that seems to be exactly what it is there. Uh, I think also the stage is clearly being set for North Korea, and I think that President Trump will no doubt take North Korea out in the very near future. Even President Putin has warned uh, Kim Jong-un that if he did not back off, that Russia would actually invade. So... Uh, just waiting to see how that's going to play out. Also, Vietnam has received a new batch of surface-to-air Spider uh, SR air defense system. That's an, actually an Israeli-made uh, air defense system that has been sent to uh, Vietnam there. And, of course, can I help but wonder what is China thinking? Vietnam to the south of China there, but uh, Israel has uh, sold this to them uh, back in 2015. And now that order has been delivered. So they have now received their air defense systems there and uh, to, to, to help them out in that area there. Another uh, interesting news, kind of closing in our broadcast here, I wanted to share with you. Nayeda, uh, excuse, excuse me, uh, Ms. Uh, Savchenko, Savchenko, I'll get it right in a minute here, get a tongue twister when you go to deal with, with uh, Ukrainian and Russian names there. Uh, Savchenko, Ms. Savchenko urged the UAF to overthrow Kiev. Now that, for those of you that remember her, um, very interesting woman there. She was actually the first woman pilot in Ukraine's history. Uh, and she also served in the Iraq war. She flies the, uh, uh, the Russian made, uh, helicopter that is world, world, uh, world known that's still, still in use today. Um, uh, the, the, the attack helicopter, the I-24, and uh, she was actually, though, 
No, you, you know what? I can't even pronounce her name because I don't remember how it's spelled. So, <laughs> Nayada, I believe is how you say her name. But anyway, she was actually uh, supposedly has been reported to have gone to the front lines there near Donetsk. And people are saying that she had told the Ukrainian soldiers that they should stop fighting Donetsk and go to Kiev and overthrow the government there. Uh, what a surprise, Ms. Savchenko, to, to make that type of comment there. You just cannot help but wonder what's going on. Has she really found out that it is a neo-Nazi government? Uh, she, she, by the way, she did fight for them uh, when they were fighting against Donetsk. She was actually fighting not from a helicopter, though, but from a ground uh, assault there. And, of course, there were a couple of journalists that were killed. Uh, they, the, the, the separatists blamed it on her. Uh, but you're in a war. What do you expect? You're firing off bombs and missiles and everything else. People are going to die. I can't say that that was necessarily right. But anyway, Putin did have her uh, released and uh, sent back to Ukraine. And uh, it was one of the humanitarian things that President Putin did during this, this whole issue there. But now she is calling out against the government, according to what some are saying. They also say that if she is found guilty or can be proven that she actually made the statements that she could face up to 10 years in prison for treason, Poor girl's getting